to anything that I think I can get a story out of. Um, so um, when we decided to put this book together we kind of, other than deciding it was fantasy rather than science fiction, um, we were just going for anything which had a, a, a somewhat darkish vibe. Um, not all pitch black, some of them were kind of grey. Um, some were kind of sparkly grey. Well, there's, there's no sparkly vampires. There are no vampires, in fact. Cherry, no. Cherry doesn't really like vampires or zombies. No, I vetoed them. Vetoed them. Um, so it's a mixture of, <laughs> of just things that seem to fit together in that darkish element. But yeah, it, it covers everything from um, a sort of um, Greenwich uh, Longitude Act to modern stuff. Um, there's, uh, there's a story in here about the Mechanical Turk. Um, basically anything and everything that I just, that poked an idea into my head. Do you want to discuss it for the wall? <laughs> <laughs> there are, I think, at least three stories in here which are proper dark. Um, one of them my sister hates to read, uh, which is um, Kingdom. Um, but I won't give you too much information about that because mm. it rather spoils the whole idea. Um, there's the, the one about the Longitude Act, there's actually mm -hmm. a um, real experiment that was being done at the time to try and communicate with ships halfway around the world by having two dogs um, which are kind of raised together and then there was this uh, magical powder which doesn't really exist called powder of sympathy and what you would do is you would use your knife on your dog in Greenwich and then sprinkle powder of sympathy on the wound and the dog halfway around the world was supposed to make a noise or yelp and that would then tell them when it was noon in Greenwich <laughs> people were being paid money at this time for anything that would solve the longitude issue and that was one of the ones they were playing around with and I took that and went I can make that even darker <laughs> so that, that one, the Greenwich Noon, is, is one of the darker ones. Um, the other one is probably Penny Prince, mm. uh, which is pretty dark as well. Um, so there's nothing I've ever kind of gone, is it too dark? Um, there's a few things I've gone, is that too weird? bizarro almost. There's a couple of stories that I'm, one story I'm tr trying to find a home for that basically, um, uh, well there's one which is zombies in so it wouldn't go in here, uh, which is called Romero and Juliet. Uh, and I thought I would never top that story and then I topped it, I just need to find a home for it. Um, so yeah, there's, there's nothing, um, there's nothing off limits particularly. Um, but it, also I didn't want to put there's quite a lot of humour in here. It's of the black kind of humour, but there's still quite a lot of humour in here. So, um, my six, my soon, shortly to be 16 year old niece has a copy, um, so it's not too scary for her, I hope. We'll see. Okay, so I kind of think there's almost two questions in there. The, the question about the fairy tales is definitely inspiration, but I, I will take a story that I've heard before and go, I'm just going to change it. Um, um, so there are a couple of stories which are, the shape of it will be somewhat familiar, um, but I will still throw in a twist. Um, it's one of the nicest things that I've ever got feedback on was somebody who was kind of going, well your stories are deliciously twisted. <laughs> uh, and that I'll take that and run with that particular thing, absolutely. In terms of writing um, the numbers of stories, I've been writing for Lies League for about nine and a half years um, and initially I was writing for them every single month so I've sent them over a hundred stories. Um, my success rate for Lies League London is I think I've had about 28 stories out of about 105 submissions so around a quarter um, but that's not um, representative of things I've sent elsewhere. Um, the standard industry rate is you're supposed to send out roughly 10 stories to get one sub, um, acceptance uh, and I'm a little bit better than that, not massively. I think it's floating around 13 or 14 percent this year. 
Um, so the, the message there is you just have to write a lot of stories and you have to send them a lot of places and eventually, hopefully, they'll be picked up. There are some stories which naturally um, almost set out a stall. Uh, I start this with uh, To Be A Hero because um, one of my particular bugbears are, are these people who are given these powers and they're so much better than everyone else and of course they're going to win in the end. And it's kind of like, well, yeah, but that's not so interesting. So um, I'm not sure I entirely believe in the, the classic heroic form. So to be a hero kind of sets out the stall saying, there are no easy wins. Um, and even though that the, the title of the book is Happy Ending Not Guaranteed, that doesn't mean there are no happy endings in here, but they're not guaranteed. Um, so some stories start off quite badly and get better, some stories start off quite badly and get worse. Um, bad Day um, obviously is a nice way to end, um, and otherwise it's pretty much as you kind of say, it's. Um, there's a couple of strong stories early, there's some longer stories which are mixed up with shorter stories, so it's... I, I ended up writing all the titles out on post-it notes with a big whiteboard I've got <laughs> and then trying to work out what the best sort of arrangement was. Um, which, once I got that done, I was pretty happy with it, so I think it works as an order. Uh, everybody wants to know that, uh, <laughs> partly because it does feel like the introduction of characters to a sort of an apprentice um, thing, so it's definitely got legs for that idea. And I have a few other ideas in the same with the same characters, I just haven't written them yet. So basically what you need to do, what everyone else needs to do, is keep asking me. So when are we going to see Mavis and Jessica again? <laughs> and I'll basically get round to it eventually. Um, one of my um, younger nieces was read that particular story and kind of want, I want more, I want more. Um, so in theory I'm supposed to write one for her birthday, which is in June, so it's not very far away. Uh, so we'll see how that works. But um, yes, they will come back, but I don't, I can't promise you when yet. Um, so I've, I've only ever written one vampire story, uh, although one was slightly vampiric, it's not strictly, it's about a sexually transmitted <coughs> disease that makes people beautiful. Um, so the, I, there won't be any vampires going down in any <coughs> things, um, subsequent, but I've, uh, I don't know why, I've now written about four zombie stories. Um, zombies are fine. Zombie, uh, zombies are fine, but vampires, you don't like vampires. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit like the, the, the werewolves versus mm. vampires sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so um, I've got a number of other, in my head, ways I could bundle up some of the short stories I've already written um, into collections. Um, some of them probably won't be enough to make a whole thing, so I might have to pad it out with something else. Um, but yeah, the, the darker stuff would be nice to put in something where it's like genre horror rather than this, which is kind of twisted but not strictly horror. Um, so some of the genre horror would be nice to get out somewhere. Anything else? There's cake at the back of the room. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all for coming.